is a haunted house MPU and you can see that segment E on the credit display is locked on and it's not locked on on any of the other displays. Uh, this uh, here is the CPU board and when I got it in the discussion was about it not booting. It turns out it does boot fine. I put a socket where the 5101 is so that the client can install NVRAM if they'd like to. So segment E, we can see is this one here. That's how I knew it was segment E because of the diagram and the schematics. And these are black hole schematics, but they're connected the same. On the status display, which is the ball and play and credit display, segment E is in group C. So we follow the schematic back and find group C and we see that segment E originates at A1J2 pin 21. We'll keep that in mind, A1J2 pin 21. So I'm gonna use my logic probe and this is just a quick and dirty way to see if you have a connector problem or a board problem. And here's pin 21 and you can see that's locked on high. For comparison, I'll do pin 20, and I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear it. It is pulsing very rapidly. So I've got a problem here with that segment signal being locked on high. So working our way back through the schematics, A1J2, pin 21, comes from pin 9 of Z23. And Z23 is a 7448, which is a binary to decimal convert, or, sorry. It's a binary to seven segment display converter. So the chip takes in these four bits, converts those, that the binary value of those four bits into a digit, and then it lights the appropriate segments to light a seven segment digit. So we need to pulse pin 9 of the 7448, and we need to make sure that the inputs to the 7448 are working correctly. So I've taken the time here to, first of all, first of all find Z23, and then mark the pin that is of concern. So we're going to probe it, and it's not a surprise, that pin is high and not pulsing. So now I'm going to go back to Z22, which is the buffer chip. And you can hear that's pulsing. There are four outputs of the chip. You switch hands. Third one and the fourth one. So the outputs of this chip are doing what they're supposed to. I suspect this chip is the problem, but let's take it to the bench and check it out. Same board on the bench now. And when I brought it over, I noticed that the edge connector for the pin that would drive segment E, which is this one, the solder on it was a little bit um, uneven. So I reflowed some solder onto there and wiped it off and put it back in the game and tested it. And I didn't really suspect that that was going to change anything and it did not. So I pulled the 7448 out and I already have a nice 16 pin socket in here. And here it is using my chip tester. And you can, it's a, a little dimly lit. Let me see if I can create some shadow here. Yeah, you can see it says eight, and that's the power on indication for the tester. And then ERR is, of course, error. So I'm gonna, going to put a new 7448 in, and let's get back to the game. New 7448 installed. Actually, this is an LS, or 74LS48, and it will work just fine. And we're booting the game in the customary five second Gottlieb delay. And you can see that the play field attract lights are going. And boom, our lock on segment E is no longer there. 
and I can go back to the board with my logic probe, and I normally wouldn't do this, but for completeness for y'all, I'm gonna probe pin 21. And now you can hear that it's rapidly pulsing. It sounds like a, well, I'll say a cicada for this time of the year. So let me put the game into test and we can test the rest of the functions of the game. So I have my switch matrix tester connected. This is switch 07, which starts test. And I can skip test by pressing the credit button, which I have marked with another black dot. And we advance to test 16. Test 16 is the lamp and relay test. So you can hear, if I stop talking, three relays click twice. And then the game will enter into lamp test. And of course the lamps are different on haunted house, but in my Spider-Man, it'll exercise. It looks like it's exercising all of them anyway. So I'm confident that the lamp drives on this MPU are fine. The next test is test 17, solenoid test. And that is the extent of solenoid test on Gottlieb System 80 games. You notice that it skipped three numbers as it was counting through. Those are the coin counter coils, which are not uh, exercised intentionally because you don't want to run up the coin counters. Next test is the one we need. Oh, switch test, sorry. So 99 indicates all switches open. I'm going to go down column one. This is the error that I usually find, and here's row one on a System 80 board. So switch matrix circuitry on System 80 boards is so easy to blow up. All right, test 19 is display test. And we'll watch for segment E and the ones to be displayed correctly. So I think we're good on segment E. Now let's make sure we have the ones. And I always like to check the ones because they are driven differently from all of the other digits that are displayed on a System 80 game. So I could watch this for a little while, but these are working like they should, and I'm going to call those good. I'm going to, I'll put a Spider-Man ROM in here and play a few games afterwards just to make sure. The last test, 20, is a test of the ROM chip and memory. And a return code of 99 indicates that it's working fine. So that's it. We can uh, turn the game off and reboot it. I've got my remote switch back here since I don't have an assistant. And five seconds. Tick, tick. I've gotten so used to hearing that over the intervening 30 years that I've owned this game. That if anything goes awry when I'm playing Spider-Man, I recognize it right away. Another little oddity or characteristic of Gottlieb games from this era is the default high score to date is 770,000. So unless you exceed that, I think it's going to stay 770,000, but we'll see. Thanks for sending it. I'll uh, combine this video with the driver board test video and we'll get it back to you.